Hi everybody, welcome back to another knife video. Uh, today is not a normal review or anything, but I'm doing an updated, uh, I guess, full collection video. So in my last full collection, I think it was like 30 minutes long. So it's going to be a long video, so I'm going to try to kind of just skip through every knife uh, and not really talk about them too much. But if you want to hear more about specific things about a knife, I think I've reviewed pretty much all of these, except for these two, uh, these three, but uh, I've pretty much reviewed all of these knives. So um, check out the other videos on my channel if you want to see something more in depth. Uh, also, um, there's some that I might not even remember the names to, just because I, I don't know, there's some that are kind of older that I don't really remember the names to. So I might not know the exact name, but you can type in the name of the brand or whatever, and it'll probably come up on my channel. So to get started, I have these three, which were not in both of my other, my 2015 and my 2018 collection update videos because uh, these are very old knives that I've had for a long time. I think this was my first ever pocket knife, and I've pretty much just had these laying under my bed at my parents' house, so um, they've never really been in my collection boxes or anything since I got back into knives around like high school. Um, these were from way before then. I think I was probably like six or seven when my grandpa gave me this knife as my first pocket knife. And this is the Case Sod Buster. You can see he had the blade engraved with his last name. Uh, you can kind of see the top of the letters, but very worn away. Sharpened very roughly on a wet stone. So uh, it's been pretty beat up. I, I obviously don't use it anymore or anything, but I just went and picked it up from my parents' house recently, and I'm going to add it to my collection boxes now. Same with this one, which is a Case Case XX. I think it's just like one of their kind of basic trapper models, but mirror finish. So you can see the top of my head. It's got that whatever trapper blade or something right there. So, um... Very nice for a case. A little too shiny and nice for me to really want to carry it now that I've had it for like, I don't know, I've probably had it for like 17 or 18 years maybe. I got it from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I think the only time I ever went there when I was really little. So I know that's like one of the biggest knife stores in the world. So I'm sure a lot of you have been there when you've been in Gatlinburg or near there. Also, I'd say my first knife purchase of kind of a more modern knife as you can see both of these are case uh, traditional knives so my first knife that really got me into more modern materials and design was the Gerber Evo it doesn't function too great the flipper is not amazing it's kind of got a weird detent that's really stiff but it's also not smooth enough to really flip out I bet if I cleaned it up it would help a little but the lockup is all the way to where the detent is touching the other frame. Aluminum handle, mystery steel, I'd say. Tip down carry, so still not like super modern, but at the time, this was the most modern knife I'd really ever seen. So those are the first three I wanted to get out of the way. Not really ones that I carry or use, but just kind of a historical part of my collection. Um, I'll start off smallest. To. I have a couple different knife boxes. I kind of have stuff that I don't really carry too much, which will be these that I'm showing you. And uh, then I'll get into kind of semi-regularly carry and then my, my regular go-to good knives. So this is kind of just random shit that I found. But this is a Gerber. Uh, no idea the name, but there's the model number. And I found this while working mowing lawns. So I just found it laying on a wooden post in a park. Nothing too special about it. My first neck knife, the Boker Vox designed uh, Mega Mini 440C. I'd like it a lot more and probably carry it a lot more if it wasn't 440C. Came with a very nice uh, sheath though. Cheap one, K bar, Jesse Giraz designed. Not sure of the name. There you can see China. Uh, 
made in China on it, but like a under ten dollar fixed blade, I think it was. CRKT, I believe also Vox designed. Yep, Vox Naze Beta. Very nice little neck knife, similar to the Mega Mini. I think it might also be 440C. That or some other type of cheaper, probably a Chinese steel. Speaking of cheap, I have a sword or sword, I don't know. Um, what they call these? Peasant knife, I think. I put kind of an Anso pattern with a Dremel. Not the cleanest pattern, but spiced it up a little from just a plain, weird feeling wood handle. And then I have my favorite fixed blade, the Gavco Shark Knife, I think, or maybe the Sharky. I know he had a couple different models with the fixed blade bottle opener thing. I think one was the Sharky and one was the Shark Knife. I think this was the Shark Knife, all one word. AEBL steel, very nice. Very cleanly ground and sharpened. The, the bevel for the grind, or the secondary bevel right there, is super small and sharp. It's got that little bottle opener. Also came with a sheath, and I put it on a tech lock. If I wanted to carry it, I don't really carry it too often, but now on to one of my knife boxes. So this is my old knife box. It's not full or anything. I kind of just, you can see, just have the front row because this is where I used to keep my whole collection. And then once it outgrew this box, I uh, just put kind of my, my cheaper knives that I don't carry too often. They're still perfectly great for EDC if you want to, but just for my better knives that I'd rather carry more, I put them in a different box. So this is the Sinkovich. Kershaw, I don't remember the name of it, model number 4037, there you can see 8CR13, but very nice for the price, 20 some dollars, maybe 30 dollars, I think it's on bearings, very smooth, very light, same with, might as well show this one at the same time, or after, I guess. The Kershaw Anso design. Don't know what that says right there. Oh, 1160 Satin. Also a nice, cheaper 8CR13 MOV. Flips great and very light. I have one of the oldest knives in my collection after I got back into knives is the Utilitac 2. Collector's first production run designed by Joe Pardue. And I'll get into it a little more later, but remember the name Joe Pardue when you see that knife. Spider Co. Tenacious, one I've had for a very long time and I carried it a ton. Uh, I've had it sharpened a couple times I think and for being a cheap Chinese Spider Co. with 8CR13 MOV and I think just bronze washers, it is super smooth, super tight, lockup is good, lockup is great, the feel is good, flips out great so very nice for the money. They obviously still sell those, and I think most of these are still being sold. Um, this big Emerson Kershaw. Steel frame lock. It's got that wave opener, thumb disc opener. A little big to carry around uh, and a little heavy for how thin it is but still really nice um, for the price I think maybe around 30 some dollars but you could really beat on it for it being a cheap knife it would hold up a lot more than one of these little 
thin liner locks. The actual first knife that got me back into kind of my collecting, uh, I put a kind of a copper stone wash. It's kind of faded to where it's just kind of a dark acid stone wash now, but you can kind of see the copper color on the CRKT. And this is the Ken Onion shenanigan, I think. Tip down, plasticky, like FRN handles. It's on washers, but still flips pretty great. When I first got it, I couldn't really flip it too well because these serrations were so sharp on my fingers. I don't know if I wore them down or if my fingers just got stronger since then. I assume my fingers just got stronger, but I mean, for being a pretty cheap knife, it is still pretty smooth. Even after no maintenance or really carrying it or anything. This is the Kershaw induction, I believe. Designed by Grant and Gavin Hawk, and there you can see it has the Hawk lock on it. So kind of a cool oddity. I think I had a gift card or some type of coupon or something, or maybe it was just a clearance sale for super cheap when I bought it on Blade HQ or maybe GP Knives, not exactly sure, but cool little oddity carry. I wasn't able to take it apart to clean it. I wanted to clean it up a little just to see if it would make the action a little smoother because it's not not the best action, but I was thinking if I could clean it up, maybe it would drop shut a little easier, but the pivot just spins around, so I think it has a D-shape in the handle here and kind of a D-shaped pivot, and something just got stripped out, so now it just spins freely, but uh, I mean, functions okay for not being able to clean it or do anything, and I think that's everything in that box. Yep. So now I'm going to switch to the bigger knife box that has all my good knives in it. I usually keep a couple little kind of glasses cleaning rags, some of these silica packets that you get in like shipping packages sometimes just because I don't know if they actually do anything, but if they do kind of absorb some moisture or something in the air, then I don't really want it getting trapped in here. So hopefully those things do something to at least absorb a little bit of it and keep my knives from rusting or corroding while they're just sitting in here. First off, I'll just start top left. Another Gavco, but this is a Gavco mass drop. Um, I think made by Best Tech Knives. There you can see the mass drop logo. Now it is known as Drop, but S35VN, the Gavco Thresher, based off one of his custom designs, but Super smooth, titanium frame lock, nice satin blade, nice pointy satin blade. Another mass drop. This is a Ferrum Forge Buck. You can see the mass drop logo, S35VN. There's a DOA, which is similar to this, but I think it just has a rounded blade right here instead of a point, so... Pretty much the same thing, but also bearings, titanium, frame lock, nice titanium clip. Now on to the ZT0055. One of my favorite knives to carry. Fits great in the pocket, even though it is a super big knife. It is wide. And pretty long compared to most of my knives but fits in the hand great even though it's super angular but fits in the hand great it's fun to flip around even if you're not flipping it just messing with the folding flipper tab works great I think I need to get it sharpened just because it's gotten a little dull but with that double bevel I think the uh, at least the tip will definitely be super sharp once I get it sharpened because kind of used it to the point where it's not cutting too great now. Now this is the Riot Event Horizon. I think it was a Blade HQ exclusive and nobody bought them. So when I went on, probably a year after they were released, they were marked down to probably 175, maybe 180 or something. So 180 for a... It might have even been as low as 100. I don't even remember, but... 
two-tone finish on the handle, kind of a stone wash below, darkened titanium with satin on top, same with the blade. Uh, blade stops on the blade right there, also full tie, bearings, frame lock with a milled pocket clip, all for an insane price. And it flips great, nice super strong detent that feels really nice. I'm sure some people would probably not like the detent because it might be a little too strong, but flips great because the flipper tab is perfectly designed. And then you have that little relief back here. So all around super comfortable knife, just a little heavy to carry. Sometimes in shorts and stuff, it kind of weighs them down, but in jeans, you don't really notice. This is the HEA Designs Equilibrium. And you can see the blade folds completely down into that handle. I think this was the blue anodized version, but it is very purplish. You can see all the purple highlights in there, so it's kind of a purpley blue with yellow hardware. Titanium pivot, titanium screws, pocket clip, hidden screws in the pocket clip that are kind of buried inside there. You can see them a little. I think that's a lanyard pin right there, so you can put your lanyard on there without it getting cut up from the blade. And a nice relief. Pretty thin blade, I think it's an eighth of, uh, eighth of an inch. So not super thick compared to most of these, especially considering the, the handle's pretty thick on the thick sides, but very comfortable. Also very wacky like the uh, Kershaw induction, so super smooth. I think it's on uh, ceramic bearings, ceramic detent, so it really flies out. Next we have the Riot Hills. I don't have this organized um, like in order of companies or types or anything really. I kind of just threw them in, so that's why the, the Riots aren't next to each other and the Mass Drops won't be next to each other. But this is the Riot Hills. Uh, just like the last Riot I showed, it was another one where it just went down to a super uh, nice price on Blade HQ. They took it down like way under a hundred dollars so too good to pass up for a titanium frame lock with bearings and everything this was an earlier Riot model so it's not as good as the other Riot just in terms of kind of the design the quality the intricacy of it but still for a titanium frame lock and how well it functions it was a great price and uh, the grind of the blade is a lot steeper or a lot uh, more shallow than the other one, so it's kind of a full flat grind, so a nice cutter. Another zero tolerance, this is the 0452CF, also designed by Sinkovich. Serial number oh, 1553. I think the other one's serial number is uh, 600, so that was kind of a nice even number. Not that I planned it or anything, but there you can see a little scratch from kind of my use of it. Carbon fiber. I think I was originally worried about the carbon fiber not being strong enough, but even squeezing it, I can't really get it to bend or flex too much, so. Very smooth. I've taken it apart a bunch and cleaned it. I think I've got it sharpened a couple times, so. It's definitely seen a lot of use and proved itself. My first zero tolerance, I believe. The 0801, Todd Rexford designed. One of my favorite knife designs ever, just the way the handle goes into the blade and the way the blade matches the handle, especially his customs. His customs look even better because of the rounded tie handle and stuff instead of the designs but all around a great knife uh, I think the only thing that could make it better was a stronger detent which the I think they called it the sprint run version maybe but it was like the bronzed titanium frame lock version that had some of the cutouts in the titanium those had an upgraded detent so they felt a lot more snappy there you can see it's L-Max, and originally I think they messed up the L-Max by kind of burning through the heat treat when they were grinding it, but um, 
I think this is a later model where they didn't do that, so I've never noticed any problems with that. And I do have a lanyard I tied on there with a Damascus Grindworks bead. So it's um, non-stainless Damascus or anything. So it did rust, but it's not like it never rusted enough to like show up in my hands. So I was a little worried about that when I saw it started to rust, but now it's just kind of a dark dark cool color next is the Kaiser Theta designed by Elijah Isham there you can see Isham's logo another very cool design the way the handle and blade meat just a really cool overall profile feels good in the hand the only problem was a small flipper tab which isn't a super big deal but the detail was a little too light so it was a little hard to flip out initially but after initial cleaning it it really got smoother easier to flip the uh before you'd kind of be able to flip it out but it wouldn't really flip out all the way or like slam shut or anything but once I got their gunky oil out of it then I was able to fix it and right here you can see the blade I mean I can just yeah I'm touching it right there so I just took a piece of sandpaper and just hit right back here just rubbed pretty much the whole edge right off right there because uh, I didn't even notice it at first when I first had the, or first got the knife but I think it was the Nick Shabazz review. I was watching his review and he said, which he's always kind of obsessive about this, about the edge being close to the back of the knife. And I never really noticed it too much, but once he pointed it out, then I couldn't stop thinking about that edge being right there. And then I slipped off the flipper and then cut my finger open on that edge. So right when that happened, I took sandpaper, knocked down the edge. You can kind of see the light spot right there on the tip of the edge. And then the rest of it's nice and sharp like normal but just that last little bit of the edge you don't really have use of it now that I took it down but haven't cut myself with it since so it worked this is the giant mouse knives ace Iona so it's the ace line called the Iona M390 very nice steel uh, the detent was kind of stiff when I first got it. The thumb studs were pretty hard to use, but now it's perfect. I don't know if I just wore it in or if it got smoother or if the detent kind of just fell into place better, but now it's perfectly smooth. I've taken it fishing a ton, cutting through braided line and everything, so doesn't even need to sharpen yet. Very nice wire pocket clip that's very uh, kind of stiff. Not so light that it will fall out of your pocket, but light enough to where it doesn't cut your jeans up on that ANSO pattern. Next is the Kershaw uh, Natrix. And this is the 7006 CU version, so it's got the D2 blade, which is upgraded from the regular version, I believe, and it's got copper handles, so you can see the patina. You can see through the little cutout in the frame lock, or sub frame lock, whatever. The shiny side, that's what the whole thing was when I first got it. So it kind of patinaed, the edges kind of smoothed on it as I carried it, and you can see back here where I've pulled it out of my pocket. It's kind of wore the patina off a little, but very nice flipper. A little small, but I think they made a bigger version maybe. Still a very cool knife. And I can jump over to this real quick that doesn't even have its own spot, but this is, I think it's the cinder, maybe? Maybe the ember? Got a hair on me. But... Uh, the normal version comes with G10 scales, so this one has copper scales, and patina it a little less than the other one, just I think because of the pattern, I couldn't really get my finger down into that pattern, so you can see it's a little 
uh, patina on the top of it, more shiny down inside the grooves and stuff. That is still the cheap steel, whatever the, it might not even be 8CR13, I think it's 3CR13, so really cheap steel, but it would have been cooler if they used the D2 like they did on the Natrix, but they did not go that far with it. This is the Christensen knives. There you can see his CK, Kaiser Critical. Very big knife. Feels nice in the pocket, even, or well, mainly with jeans, but if you're using shorts, then you can feel it a little more, but still, not too bad. Bearings, kind of a light detent. It's got a nice kind of a fake Timascus pivot collar right there around their old style pivot. Uh, S35VN, like most Kaiser knives are. Frame lock. Build pocket clip. Big backspacer with a nice point on the end. Give one more flip of it. Then, kind of an old one, the Browse Bionic. D2 blade, aluminum handles. Um, another one where jimping right there kind of hurts you when you flip it. It's not as bad as when I first got it, but like I said, it might just be from my finger stiffening up or toughening up since I got it. But also very pointy flipper, so I think the Gen 2 had a more rounded flipper that made it a lot easier to flip and a better detent but still a very comfortable little knife just wish they did a little better steel than d2 and maybe titanium handles or something over the aluminum and the pocket clip is also d2 i think but it got really kind of tarnished and stained just from carrying it and i've bent it out like four or five times probably getting that end hooked on stuff like a seat belt or on the corner of a table but I've been able to bend it back into place, and it hasn't kind of, whatever, weakened up and snapped off or anything, so happy about that. This is the Griptilian, full-size Griptilian. I think it's the 550, does it say? I don't think it says. It might be like the 550 or 551, and it's got that Warren Cliff blade with the spidey-looking hole in it. 154 cm and then you can see Mel Pardue so that Utilitac 2 that I showed earlier was a Joe Pardue design which I believe is Mel Pardue's son and this is the Benchmade uh, Griptilian I don't think I said bitch, Benchmade yet but very nice axis lock I carried this for like an entire summer cutting weed whacker cord with it every day and it held up great I don't know if I've even sharpened it since then, and the blade, I mean, the blade's not super sharp, but sharp enough. Yeah, you can see a couple little dings in the blade, but definitely a nice hard-use knife. I think when I got it, it was only like 80-some dollars, then they went up to probably 100 or 115 now, but back then they were a little cheaper. This is the Endura 4 Spyderco with... The Sprint Run ZDP 189. Seki City, Japan. Very clean blade still. I don't think I've had this one sharpened yet. Probably needs it because I've used it quite a bit. Pocket clip is all scratched up. But very comfortable. Smoothed it up a lot more than when I bought it because Enduras do come pretty stiff. So you got to open and close them a lot before they really work their way in and break in. Another one that desperately needs sharpened is my Parrot 2. S30V, just the standard version with black scales. I did have a custom pocket clip, probably in the last update I did. I had a um, titanium, I think I might have just said plastic. Uh, the normal Spider Cup pocket clips on there now, but I think I had the titanium one that I milled or ground out. Um, if I had a mill, I'd probably still have it because it'd work a little better than just 
using a bench grinder to grind out titanium, but I thought rather than having one that looked cool, I'd have one that was more functional, so I put the original one back on. And another Spyderco, the Sage 2. This is the titanium version. Every version of the Sage has a different locking mechanism, so this is the titanium frame lock. Taichung Taiwan S30V. Cool design. I like all of the Sages. They all feel great in the hand. I think I do like the titanium one better than most of the others. They have like a liner lock, a back lock, um, a compression lock, I think. Very nice wire pocket clip. Even better than the Ace Iona. It's a little more stiff, and it's running on a smooth scale, so it's easier to go in the pocket than the other one. And this is the Carter Prime by Ontario Knife, or Ontario Knife Company, I guess. Yeah, OKC. So made in Taiwan, titanium handle, uh, D2 blade, I think. Very thick chunk of D2. There is a insert in there, but there is a little bit of lock rock and stuff, so... Definitely not the best built knife, but it was like $80 for titanium and D2, so not a bad deal. You kind of know what you're getting when you order that. And I believe, I think Robert Carter is the son of Joe Pardue and the grandson of Mel Pardue. So I have the whole family line pretty much from the Griptilian and the Utiltac 2 from my other box. Now I have one that I really, I don't know if I've ever really carried this one. Um, I bought it from my local knife store because it is, I think it's from around 2004, maybe, 2003, 2004. It is the Buck collaboration with Strider. So it's got like plasticky Buck scales, kind of a cheap liner. The blade steel isn't amazing, but what I'm carrying today was... My real strider that I bought a couple years after buying this buck version. So you can see they're almost one to one copies of each other. Or at least the buck version is a one to one copy of the actual strider. So very cool. I mean, I got to hold and really feel what a real strider would feel like in the hand and definitely led me to buying a real one. So I'll probably just leave that in there while I'm... I guess I can talk about it a little more, but that kind of had cheaper steel, whatever's from 2004 before really most modern knife makers, at least most of these makers were making knives. So this one is a lot newer than that one. Titanium scale, upgraded, uh, whatever, over travel stop right there just green polished titanium and I got like the tiger striped anodized tie with the tiger striped blade and this is the SNG so the smaller version of the striders Here, there you can see his cool logo S30V for this one green G10 Love carrying that one. Another mass drop knife. This is the Degnan Blades, or Degs Blades, maybe Matt Degnan designed. Oh man, I forget the name. Melrose. That's what it is, I think, because that's a rose logo right there. So very clean. You can see it just has that, and it has the D right there for drop.com. S35VN right there on the flipper. And it's kind of just supposed to imitate an old stiletto. And flips great. Nice skinny blade. Taking this fishing a lot too, and it's obviously held up great. Bearings, titanium frame lock, over travel stop. Really nice milled clip. Super smooth. It's about as smooth as like a normal spring clip, but still milled out, kind of a combination of both of them. Then I have this Kaiser Shoal. 
designed by Kim Ning. Not too familiar with his work, but very cool kind of rock pattern on the scales. The old style Kaiser Pivot S35VN, very nice thick blade. Flips great. Titanium frame lock, obviously. Cool compound blade grind, kind of a recurve also. All satined. You can see the Kaiser logo. Blue hardware for a little bit of pop. Next is another Isham design. And this is the Abstruse. And I think it's just an Isham Blade Works. I think he had it machined by Best Tech Knives. So it's kind of just sold through his company rather than going through Kaiser like most of the other designs that I have from him. But awesome design. You can see how small the handle is compared to the blade. But feels great in hand. Very, very comfortable. Put your hand way up on the blade there. And M390 blade steel. So front flipper that's super easy to use. I see a lot of front flippers, and I'm not sure if I'd really be able to use them, but then, I mean, I ordered this one without ever feeling one, and then was easily able to pick it up first try, so you can even flip it out if you get your fingernail in the nail nick right in there, or just, you know, traditionally open it. Then I have the Pangea Designs Prilobite, so I usually carry it like this just so that, whatever, the pocket clip sticking up out and the little carabiner on it, just so it doesn't open since it is not uh, locking in any way. There you can see the Prilobite, kind of Trilobite logo, Pangea Designs. G10, they have a titanium handled version now, S35VM. Super skinny blade, super small, very sharp. A nice little secondary bevel on there, so very nice and useful for being such a small, compact knife, but kind of more of a novelty than a EDC hard use, like a stride or anything, but I mean, it's a knife, still works. Bottle opener, pry bar, screwdriver tip, kind of. I think that's most of the tools on it, and then you have the Keeper, oh, uh, hex bit, quarter inch hex bit driver right there. So, definitely a useful little knife. Another Isham. This is the Megatherium, designed by Isham, made by Kaiser. So, huge knife, huge blade, nice milled pocket clip. Uh, cool milled handle where the titanium is milled out and uh, this kind of unique carbon fiber is overlaid on top. There you can see it kind of works as an over travel stop too on this frame lock. Very strong detent. Sometimes I gotta kind of squeeze it to try to pop the detent back a little further down in and then it works a little easier but Light enough to be able to flick out with your thumb or middle finger or pointer finger if you want. Very nice milled clip. I did get it caught on a seat belt and bend it out and then I had to bend it back and you can't really tell. You can kind of feel but you can't really see that anything happened to it. So very nice high quality knife. Then we have the Kaiser GPB1, the Gray Pocket Brute 1 from John Gray. I love his knives. One of my favorite designers that just does super unique stuff that really when you look around at other knives that custom knife makers are doing and kind of what they're working with and designing, they never really look like this. Just the way some of his customs are a little more dramatic to where, where you can kind of put the blade down onto like the surface you're cutting and your hand is way out of the way. I mean, it's like, like your hand's like an inch up above. So it's like, it's almost like a kitchen knife 
but he has a couple more, even more dramatic ones where the blade goes like straight up. So it was always cool to me. I always liked how unique it was and it just feels amazing in the hand. Obviously pocket brute means it's big, beefy, thick blade, thick handle, heavy. Feels good in a jeans pocket, not too great in shorts pockets, but definitely comfortable in jeans. Nice lanyard hole back there. I mean, thinking of putting a lanyard on it, I think I have a a deer antler. Um, it almost looks like this jigged bone handle um, deer antler bead that I uh, got on Instagram. So I've been thinking of putting that on there, and I think it would match pretty well because it's kind of a hunting looking knife. But And I think the last one in this box is this little Kershaw. It says speed safe, but GTC design. I think it's the hops. Um, blue, whatever, painted or coated pocket clip or something. Super cheap, 20 bucks, I think. Speed safe, which isn't great, but I mean, for such a small, cheap knife, it doesn't make me mad or anything like it does for the. There's some Kaiser or Kershaws that are just really, um, really cool designs and they look like they'd be really nice flippers but they put the speed safe on it kind of ruins it for me but i don't mind with this one it doesn't really affect it too much probably helps it because it'd be a lot harder to flip it out than a regular knife but i do carry this one uh i use it a lot i mean my dad cuts shit with his on like concrete floors and his still seems to work pretty great so he's definitely put it through some hard use but mine's been a little lighter used i'd say bottle opener on the back that's why it's got the hops name because it's kind of his beer line and i think that's it for this box but i still have two more that i'm going to run to grab real quick So I ran and grabbed one that I don't keep in my knife box because I had to keep it in my Spyderco box that it came in, but this is the Para 3 River's Edge Special Edition. So these are pretty limited. I think they made like about 700 of them. Carried it just a few times. Never really put it through hard use, but I mean it's a Spider cone, it's a pair of three, so obviously it can hold up to it. CTS 204P. Really nice carpenter steel, I believe. And you can see, super smooth. I mean, that just kind of, like it feels like a mirror in there on the washers. They do have new versions of a pair of two in this combo. I missed the first run. I actually, I didn't really miss it. I ordered one, put through the order on their website, and then got an email saying, oh, we actually uh, oversold what we actually had. The website messed up. So they said, when they get their new order in, then I'll be in line to buy one of those. So looking forward to that. Not super bummed because I understand they had kind of technical trouble with it, but... It'll also not be exclusive, like it's exclusive to River's Edge, but it's not exclusive to two runs. So they said they're going to keep making it until every single person that wants one will get one. So a lot of people got mad about the pair of three that they ran out before everybody could get one. And a lot of people were paying like $400 for them. So I've seen into the mid 400s on auctions and stuff. So and I think this is the last one that I have. This is the Drop Forged Hunter from Cold Steel Knives. One of those ones, though, it's it's a weird knife, so it didn't sell very well on Blade HQ, so I got a really good deal on it. 52100 High Carbon Steel, made in Taiwan. It's got this rough finish on it. There you can see the steel peeking through on the bevel, but definitely something that you can take out in the woods and just I mean with that thickness you can really just hammer it into a tree and then probably be fine so something I've, I've taken it uh 
out with me when I've gone on fishing trips and stuff. I haven't really used it too much, but um, when I go camping, I mean, I'm definitely, definitely taking this in the bag. And I think that's it. I mean, that's a 45-minute video, and I tried to speed through a lot of it, but I think that's pretty much everything. The only knife I can think of that I didn't put in it was a multi-tool that I have in my backpack. So other than that, I think that's pretty much everything. Just realized I forgot that, too. The Boker Plus War Toad designed by Tough Thumbs or Tough Knives right there. Jeff Blavelt, custom pot clip that I made. And Smokotelli gold-plated, rose gold-plated rose skull with a lanyard that I put on it. So that's officially it. I'll just cut this video off now before it gets even longer. But if you, like I said before at the beginning of the video, if you want to see any more information on any of these knives, I think I've done a review on everything. So just type in the brand name. If I forgot the name of the actual knife, then the brand name should lead you at least closer to finding which video it was. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time.